Hey, that's your All Things Dentistry. Thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time. And I'm just standing in Montreal, a little suburb called Boucherville, at the top of this like 200 foot mound. It's really cool actually. Doing a workout between my oldest son's hockey games and I was thinking as I was running out or walking, running up this thing, I'm getting old. You know, when you're top of the mountain is when you take your final root canal x-ray and you're just like, yes, that looks awesome. I am feeling great. But you know when either the files are going to length or the x-ray, your final x-ray shows something short and you think, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. I'm short for time. I'm stressed. The slob rule can come in really helpful to try to figure out which canal is which. And I know, as well as you probably know, that when you're doing root canals and you get that final x-ray you're in a stressed moment, it's complicated to try to figure out quickly which canal is which. So that canal, the x-ray that I just put, or the, the video that I put up, was definitely a distal shift. And a shout out to all the people that, the many people that responded, I really appreciate that. So it was a distal shift shot and the canals from mesial to lingual, or I guess mesial to distal, were a mesial buccal, middle mesial, somebody picked up on that, I really, that's really cool, mesial lingual. So this is really a shout out to the people who responded, many, a few of the many, we got the multi zoosable Acid Rain, Kieran5194, Kijiji, and haagen -Dazs. And I hope that what they came up with is exactly the reason why I saw it as a, well I know I, I took it as a distal shift shot, but kind of some of the reasons. So there's more posterior teeth in the x-ray and that can give you an idea if there's, so if there's more, mes more teeth mesial to the, the tooth in question, then there's a high probability that that's a mesial shift. So the slob rule which was brought up and that's the way to do it. That's, you know, it's a really easy way to quickly figure out, but it's not that easy when you're stressed. So let's just quickly review the slob rule. So if you're the, the x-ray tube and I'm the tongue and this is, so this would be the ling, my index finger is the lingual canal and this is the buccal canal. Let's just shift the x-ray tube just a little bit to the distal. And here you can see that as the, as the tube moves to the distal, my, this is the lingual, my index finger moves to the distal as well. So it's the lingual, so same side lingual and here's the opposite which is buccal. So let's do that one more time. So you know you take an x-ray with your gutta percha points or your, your files in the canal and they're superimposed and you think I don't know which canal is which. And if you know you take a distal shift, my lingual, my index finger, the lingual move to the same side as the distal, same side lingual, so you know that that's a lingual canal. And my middle finger, ooh, middle finger, move to the buccal which is the uh, mesial part of the tooth. So this is following video is just going over some of the tools and tips that my colleagues and mentors showed me about how to figure that out and do it with I'm doing it with Dexter so nobody was harmed only Dexter and he didn't say much so let's take a look okay so we have our files placed in our tooth in tooth number four six you can see I place a 115 file in in the mesiolingual and we have a number 10 in the mesial buckle now I've set them to 20 millimeters working length and let's take a look and see what we can see when we take a radiograph. We're gonna start with a straight arm buckle. So what we're gonna do is, because it's a metal frame, we're gonna take this off. You can use a radiolucent frame. I find that when we're using this type of file hold, sensor holder, it's easier to just take the whole rubber dam off. So what I'm gonna do is normally I tear with the corner the rubber dam so that after, we're after it becomes this crazy saliva covered mess, when we go to put our rubber dam frame back on, I know that every time, so let's do it for real here, I know that every time I go to put the frame back on, that that corner, this tear, is to the right side. So it's quick and easy and I don't have it you know, shifted like this. So that's one little tip that's really helpful that my endo mentor taught me many years ago. So let's go ahead and place our sensor into Dexter and again we're going to make sure that the make sure that the rubber dam clamp let's see if I can lift his head there we go the rubber dam clamp is showing so you can see there's one uh, file that just went flying out of the way and that's the reason we use this so when the patient bites down like now don't bite my fingers is that they're biting on the plastic and not our files. 
So let's go ahead and take it rear off. So we're gonna take our straight on, let's line everything up and see how it goes. And there we go. So even though we have a break, so here's our straight on, and though even though we have a break of the files, which never seems to happen, usually they're superimposed on each other, I don't know which file is which. And that's the guessing game. So if we do do a, let's try the distal shift to start. Let's angle it down like that a bit. Let's see if we can get that on that angle. Like that, let's give that a rip. Whoa, totally missed it. Boom, there we go, much better. Okay, so that's the angle that I used. And let's take a look and see how it is in line with the rest of the apparatus. So you can see here, it's just at the beginning, kind of flush here. And with a degree, it looks like I can almost get two fingers in there. And that gives us that type of radiograph. So here we know that the same side lingual, opposite side buckle. So I know that this file here, the more distal one is my lingual file. And I know that that one's in my distal or my buckle file. So let's take even more of it. Hey, so I hope that really helped. I've got another couple videos on shift shots. I think they're extremely important. And what we're trying to do is make our root canals much more efficient, much more simple and predictable because that's really the key. And there's so many different tools that you can use to help. So subscribe if you like to like what you see. Place your comments below. It's I really my wife and I actually she follows too. She's says you need to get back on those get back and talk to those people and I love it. So thanks a lot and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.